to see stories these days that went to Chamisa and and oh yeah the, the leadership of Tribu C and said uh, let's have talks guys um and in one of Chabang's demands was let's take back uh, the party to the Guero Congress. Now conversation went on of course and some people saying no it's a good thing to do blah 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 okay my question is i had understood triple c to be another part that is why douglas monzora had to withdraw or recall those whom he recalled to them if chamisa is to agree that they go back to the Guero Congress. Is that agreement not going back to the MDC? What is Monzora's take in Chamisa going back to the Guero Congress? That's, that's, I so desire to hear his, his, his position. What is, what is Monzora's position or the, the, the MDC being MDC or MDC allies? I'm even confused with which one are they, but MDC anyway. What is their position in, in hearing that people are going back to take the World Congress? Is it a null and void story that existed and is forgotten about it in the World Congress? Or is it still their property? It's them who still decided what to do with it. If anyone goes there, does it does it do they have a word in it? Because I'm I'm I think I'll be confused with that kind of a demand, really, to say, okay, we're told this Triple C thing is a, is a new part. If it is to go back to go to Congress, it's no longer Triple C, it's MTC Alliance. Well, what exactly is that? Mondora was even a part of that. Of course, a long story short, we'll be told, no, there was MTC, then we lost it there, then we corrected. I don't know. Can I, can I have a comment from him to clarify the links between the MTC Alliance, the Guero Congress, and the Triple C current? So yeah, if I has no money, I just walk alone. I don't want to go to the bank. I don't want to go to the bank. I don't want to go to the Well, thanks so much, uh, Carlos, for that question this morning. I see our Alita just joined us there. Uh, Senator Jackson, I've sent you the mic, Senator Jackson, to become a speaker. Please do accept the mic this morning, and then you can have our conversation. But Cheng, I see you in the app. Want to respond to Carlos? You can go ahead, Cheng, and respond. Let's wait for Alita to join us this morning. Oh no, I, I meant to uh, call on you to 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 organize um, him to to get the the mic uh, so that because we have hardly under an hour, he has a very uh, urgent engagement that he has to do right now. So it's under an hour. Uh, please quickly arrange for him to to speak, and then we can always talk about these other things when it's done. All right, cool. I've sent him the mic to become a speaker. Senator Tricas I've sent you the mic to become a speaker this morning, and I've removed other speakers in case would see our space is flooded. So I've gave you the mic, Senator, to become a speaker. Please do accept it on your end, and then you can go ahead with our interview this morning. Yeah, uh, quite interesting, and uh, we, are, we are happy that our guest is here and he has joined us. Uh, good morning, Senator Monzora. Uh, good morning. Yes. Good morning, sir. Let's talk about the elections. A uh, few weeks before the elections, sir, you pulled out of the elections, rating different issues. Uh, part of particular of them was the issue of the television report. What's your overview of the elections as the MTC and you pulled out of the elections? What's your overview of what you've seen so far? Well, the MTC pulled out of the election for a number of reasons. One of them was the delimitation report, of course. But um, the more important one was the selective treatment that the MDC got. 87 of its candidate were, the candidates were disqualified um, uh, under circumstances that were totally, totally unfair. We saw uh, the same ZEC allowing candidates from other political parties, notably from the Triple C uh, in Bulawayo. Um, they submitted their papers the following day. They made payments the following day. But we were denied the ability to do the same. So we felt that we were being differentially treated. And we knew that uh, ZEC was treating us that way because of our stance over delimitation. It must be remembered that the Triple C had actually supported the delimitation to the extent that they hired a lawyer, Jeremiah Bamu, to go to the Constitutional Court to fight us. Uh, over a delimitation, uh, in other words, to fight in the uh, ZEC corner. 
we did make uh, a, a point that uh, to all opposition parties, including the triple C, that this election process was a shame uh, and that we should all pull out of this election so that uh, we um, have the African Union, the South, come in and resolve the matter. But um, uh, we were told that uh, some people were confident of winning uh, and so on. So uh, that's where we are. The delimitation is still there. The electoral field is still there. Um, what we, we have seen now, of course, is the issue of um, uh, the parliament itself and the powers that the parliament has. Uh, these have not gone away at all. Well, thank you so much uh, for answering that, uh, Senator Munzora. Now, uh, a, a lot has happened uh, for us to get where we are right now. You have done uh, recalls yourself, but we would like to hear from you. Uh, what is your view on the recalls that were done recently? And how they were done? Yes, but uh, let me just do a small correction. I was not the first leader to do recalls, and neither am I the only one. The first leader to do recalls was Morgan Changrai when he recalled Tendai Biti and 20 others um, after they, they, they rebelled and formed their group, uh, the PDP, which included uh, Mr. Shabangu. The second person to recall was uh, Nelson Chamisa, who recalled Togozani Kupe in 2018 with a month to go to election. And then the third person to recall was Toko Zanikope, who is acting president, recalled the majority of the members of the parliament elected in 2018. And of course, I did come in and I did a recall as, as well. Um, what is important is that uh, recalls must be done when a person has ceased to belong to the political party one way or the other. In the MDC, that is not difficult to see uh, because in terms of our constitution, in terms of clause 510A of our constitution, if a, 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 an MP joins another political party, then he ceases to be a member of the MDC and then he is recalled. This is what happened in, uh, uh, in, in the majority of the recalls you saw. Uh, Nelson Chamisa and his uh, team of uh, uh, lawyers uh, wrote affidavits on behalf of these MPs to say we are no longer members of the MDC. They did not seem to have considered the, the legal consequences of that. So as a result, we, 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 we were able to recall. And when you recall in the context of the MDC, uh, we do so in terms of the constitution. We do so in terms uh, uh, through a designated official. Now, when you have members elected in parliament, the first thing you do as the leader of that party is to write a letter to the speaker and you enclose your constitution. Uh, so you will say, I'm Dr. Monzora, my, uh, my, my, my party has members of parliament. This is the list of the people uh, that are from my party. Of course, he will have it anyway. Then you uh, attach the constitution of your party and uh, the signing mandates that you have so that the speaker knows that when he receives a letter which is signed by Tapua Mashakada, he knows it is a letter from the MDC. So that's what we did. Now, in the case of the Triple C, I do not think that they filed anything to the speaker when their members were elected, even before they were sworn in. Um, uh, they did not con uh, converse with the speaker at all. They did not advise him. Because once you write to the speaker, he opens a file for your party with the signing mandates. So he, with that, is able to ignore any other correspondence. But if there is nothing like that, then the speaker cannot guess who 
in your party is qualified to correspond with him. And in terms of the law, the speaker cannot sit in judgment to say this letter is coming from the triple C, but uh, I doubt whether Chabangu has got a mandate. That's not the duty of the speaker. The law is very, very clear. And uh, apparently this law, we drafted it in, in Bulawayo actually. Uh, in the rainbow, uh, fifth floor of the rainbow um, hotel. And uh, the people who drafted it were myself, um, Jacob Mdenda, the speaker now, Paul Mangwana, the late Magaisa, Edward Mkosi, and a lawyer from Blauer called uh, Jesper Chuma. So we drafted it and we removed the powers from the speaker to determine uh, the uh, uh, things that come from political parties. What must happen is that recalls must be discussed at political party level. Um, and then when they come to parliament, the speaker has absolutely no discretion. So I can't tell you uh, whether Mr. Chabangu is a authority, but the most important thing is that there must be evidence that he has no authority. And that evidence comes from a constitution, comes from a, a, a correspondence. Now, I am aware that uh, Advocate Chamisa wrote to Parliament and the letter is dated the 11th of September. That letter uh, is date stamped, I think, the 17th of October or something like that. Now, Advocate Chamisa's uh, office is 90 meters from Parliament building. And an explanation has to be made as to why a letter written on the 11th of September only reaches Parliament on the 17th of October. The only unescapable conclusion is that this letter is an afterthought. Somebody then realized that they had not advised the speaker on who the true officials were. And then they were trying to do thing, uh, the thing ex post facto. And I think that uh, uh, that was a bit tragic. So we have a situation where recalls have been done. And I need to clarify here on when a recall happens. A recall does not happen when the speaker speaks in parliament. A recall happens when the letter that you have written is received by parliament and dead stamped by parliament. That's the moment that the MP ceases to be an MP. What the Speaker does in the House of Assembly and what the President does in the House of Senate is simply announcing to the world the effects that would have happened. Now, the Chabangu recalls did happen and people were removed out of, uh, from Parliament, which means that uh, 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 Mr. Chabangu has the power because he is the one who acted first. When it comes to these things, it is the person who acts first who will get an advantage. So uh, as regards the real logic behind picking specific MPs, I am not privy. And I will need to say uh, that contrary to what uh, uh, some people like Rohanya, uh, Simbachikanza, and of late this man who was uh, booted out of the ZCTU, gift him Stasa, have tried to say that the MDC is involved in the recalls that happened. We have absolutely nothing to do with that. We have our own political party. Yes, we did not do well. We have since moved on. And we are engaging. We, we are rebuilding our party. We are building international synergies. I'm sure you saw uh, us going to the Labour Party. Uh, we have engaged other international parties. We are rebuilding our party under the three R's. Restart, reset, reset, restart, and recover all. And uh, we are too busy to be involved in these things. What is very clear is that there is absence of corporate governance within the party. I am aware that uh, Mr. Chabangu did sign for other candidates um, in, the, in this election and people cannot say that they don't know him. 
I know Mr. Chabangu is at one point in time the Secretary General of the Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union. I know it because um, I was a legal advisor of the ZCTU and I did start a course called the Paralegal Course, which was um, uh, aimed at uh, educating or training um, uh, uh, senior trade union leaders. And this in, in, in that class inclu- um, were included Tabita Kumalo, um, Tokozani Kupe, um, uh, uh, my deputy um, Pariwa, Gideon Shoko, and Sengezo Chabang. So Chabang was a member of the ZCTU, was a member of the ZCTU General Council. And when the MDC was formed, he was there. At one point in time, he was the chairperson of Matebeliland North Region. Um, and when the MDC broke up uh, in 2014, Chabang went with BT to form the PDP. When the PDP was readmitted by Advocate Chamisa at the Gueru Congress, uh, against our advice, uh, the uh, uh, Tendai BT came with his leadership, including uh, Mr. Chabangu. So one cannot say that he is foreign to the Triple C. Well, thanks so much for that response. Quite interesting there, what's mm-hmm. interesting about there, giving us the history of Chabang in terms mm-hmm. of his involvement with the MTC, his involvement with PTP. But also, Mr. Senator Douglas Monzora, someone asked earlier, I want to say, uh, now that uh, Chabang is saying, let's go back to the, the Gwere Congress, right? Using the same structures of the Gwere Congress. What are your thoughts around that? Does the Gwere structures of the Congress remain with the MTC? Why should they move to Triple C when Triple C is a new movement or new party? The Triple C was not there in 2019 when the Gweru Congress was done. So uh, going to uh, uh, there, the Triple C was not there. Um, But what this um, uh, uh, betrays is the lie that has been told that there is a new party. It it, it, it simply means that uh, the Triple C was the a, a faction of the MDC. That's what it seems to suggest. But the problem is that the Triple C was not there in Guero. But what Chabango seems to be pushing at is that they must respect the results of the Guero Congress. And the results of the Guero Congress uh, do put Chamisa as the president, Welsh Menulbe as the vice president, um, BT as the vice president, uh, Kore as the vice president, Tabita Kumalo as the national chairperson, Wende as the secretary general. In short, what Chabang is, is, is saying there is that let's go to back to corporate governance. Let's go back to a party with the structures, with officials, and not a party which is a one-man one man band. That is the logic uh, that there is a, a, there is a, a something legal ab- about it. Uh, you can't say a party which was formed in 2022 goes to a structure of 2019. Uh, that, that simply does not add up and does not make sense. But what they are saying is that we must have a structure, we must have this party was formed. Uh, when it was formed, uh, the officials who were at Guero were present. And at one point in time, we are designated officials of the Triple C until an announcement was made by the leader of the Triple C that everybody had been dissolved. Now, what uh, Wachabang seems to be saying is that let's un- dissolve others uh, and have a party with the structures. Well, thank you for responding to that, uh, Senator Monzora. Quite interesting, yeah, in politics. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I don't understand <laughs> the issue of structure. To so say, let's say, of the Guero structures coming to Triple C. One Triple C is not even part of the Guero. I, quite, quite confusing there. Let's go to our speakers this morning. Guys, please be brief. Ask one question. Uh, brief to Senator Monzora there. Let's go to Manuza Takilas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Simboti, for coming in here to answer some of the few questions that are there. Uh, Firstly, I just wanted to defend you on behalf of the other people that came in first to actually push that you 
uh, record some people during the MDC times. I think people come here with emotions, too much emotions that we should not be kind of dwelling on. Uh, but firstly, um, yes, we've noted you in Liverpool uh, attending the Labour conference and also saying that you need to start to rebuild bridges as well with some of the Labour parties across the world. Will it be ideal to ask, is there a possibility that we can actually start to build bridges in Zimbabwe before we go across to uh, to, to Labour Party in the UK, before we build bridges with some of our, like the triple C's, uh, the triple C's and other parties here in Zimbabwe to try and form a formidable um, uh, opposition party that has some of the structures and stuff like that that you've mentioned. Um, secondly, I know you do understand uh, the constitution of Zimbabwe very well. You drafted it, most of it, together with uh, Magaisa and Washman Nube and stuff like that. Are they, is someone must be advising Chabango to, for him to be able to act upon this and recall some of these people. And they were very aware that they... Uh, the triple C did not go and notify who are the members of parliament coming in because some of the triple C members were boycotting the first opening sessions of there and they were making noise about it. What would you be able to advise the triple C going forward for us in Zimbabwe to have an opposition party that is effective to bring the government to accountability? That's all my question for this morning, Zimbabwe. Thank, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, my name is Sek Douglas. Um, our strategy as the MDC um, is to build synergies uh, across the continents, um, uh, all over the world, um, because those synergies were there anyway um, at the inception of the party. And those synergies were broken in 2018 uh, when the party was taken over in a hostile manner without regard to its constitution. Um, and the party then moved from um, a Labour-backed party to an ultra-right party and a pro-austerity party, which did not get the approval of our Labour friends across the world. Uh, so that external uh, synergy building is critically important. Equally important is the uh, unity of all progressive forces uh, in this country. Um, yes, it is important that uh, we must uh, speak with one voice. We must uh, um, build bridges. But what is important is that this must be predicated upon mutual respect and the mutual realization of the importance of the mutual survival of each one of us. Now, I am fortified to say I find the Triple C uh, leadership driven by hate and malice. Um, and uh, I find uh, their comments on social media uh, very acerbic and toxic. Now, a party united with itself through toxicity is not durable because, as Joshua Nkomo said one day, uh, to Robert Mugabe, ironically, uh, during Gukura Hundi, Joshua Nkomo said to Mugabe, do not teach these young people blood because one day they may want yours. And this is exactly what happened. Uh, people were taught blood. And in 2017, the young people who were involved in Gukura Hundi uh, were able to get rid of Robert Mugabe. And we see this playing out within the triple C. So, yes, it is important to work together, to be united in to fight this dictatorship. In fact, Zimbabwe needs a united opposition. But this must be predicated on mutual respect and not day in, day out, uh, uh, um, uh, engaged in acts of hate. Uh, all you need to see is uh, to go to their reaction when I post uh, anything. Yesterday I talked about dialogue and they were there uh, um, in full force uh, spewing hate and vitriol 
You cannot build a movement. Now, this movement that we must rebuild must be based on certain fundamental principles. One of the principles is adherence to the principles of democracy. I am not interested in uniting with an autocratic entity. I am interested in an entity that, uh, that will uh, devote itself to the principles of democracy, as justice, equality, and a disdain of a tribal or regional domination of one region by another. Because it breeds resentment. I know it because one of my immediate ancestors is from Matebeleland. And I know uh, that uh, the people down there do not like domination. Uh, and it is it is, it is uh, um, uh, natural. We in Manka don't like domination. People in Mashingo don't like domination. People Mashona don't like domination. So yes, it is possible uh, to have a uh, working together, but it ma there must be a change in paradigm. Now comes to the issue of Chabangu, and uh, um, what I can say is that one, his recalls were well thought out. Uh, and I see that uh, all the legal loopholes were plugged by him. Uh, I also see that um, uh, he exploited uh, something that he did not create, something that was created by the leadership, the top leadership of the Triple C, and that is Advocate Chamisa. Once you erect any opaque system in the party, it is not only opaque to the onlookers, it is also opaque to yourself. So what then happened is that uh, Chabangu, who is... Uh, according to him, a very credible claim of interim secretary generalship because he says he was appointed by Chamisa himself and that uh, this was supposed to be some arrangement, uh, internal arrangement, and that when people were dissolved, uh, there was no formalization of the dissolution. And then he says, I remain the interim secretary general. Now, the advice I can give to the Triple C, or if, if it matters at all, because they've already answered to that, the advice is that there is nothing that they can do which is effective more than a dialogue with Chabang. Because I have seen their court application, it is one of the most poorly drafted applications of all time. And this application is saying that uh, the MPs are saying that Chabangu is not qualified to uh, recall them. He is not the interim secretary general. And they say the only person who can uh, speak to parliament, who can correspond with the parliament, is advocate Chamisa himself. But unfortunately, in their court application, the triple C as a party is not cited. In other words, we do not have an affidavit deposed on behalf of the triple C saying that uh, the triple C itself as a party did not recall. So we do not have the, uh, uh, the, the triple C disputing Chabang. But more importantly, one of the most undisputed officials of the in fact, the most undisputed official of the Triple C is Advocate Chamisa. He is the president, of course. But he has not written an affidavit in the court supporting his MPs. He has not deposed an affidavit that, number one, he did not uh, Senator, appoint Senator, Chabang. Senator, he has not written you, that. Allow me to cut you short today. Earlier on, you spoke about the issue of saying, I'm aware that Mr. Chabang signed for other Triple C candidates. Maybe can you cite to us which candidates were signed for by Mr. Chabang? If you know, uh, unfortunately, I am unable to uh, uh, to say which ones. Um, also, without uh, prejudicing uh, the innocent candidates, some of the innocent candidates, uh, but I'm unable to say. But uh, I, I was advised that he did actually sign for or for 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 candidates. But what I'm saying is that uh, there is no there is no point in pursuing this court case. Because Advocate Chamisa himself is not before the court to defend the MPs or stated in other words to corroborate or support the story of the MPs that they were illegally recalled. He as an official hasn't deposed an affidavit. Now, in the absence of that, 
the judge is likely to ask the MPs whether any one of them have appointing capability. And the answer obviously is no. They cannot appoint anyone. The only person with appointing capability is the president in terms of their practice. And the president is not there to say he did not appoint Chabango. And in the reply by Chabango himself, uh, his lawyers uh, cleverly uh, touch on that, that they are saying I have no authority, but they have not attached any constitution or anything to the contrary, not coming from them or uh, coming from someone else. So I think um, in, answer to your, uh, in, in your answer to your question, Douglas, the most sensible thing is for these people to sit down and talk this thing over. Well, thanks so much for that response, Senator Takas Munzura. Yeah, this morning, guys, whichever are just joining us, we're talking to Senator Takas Munzura, the lead of MTCT. Let's move on to the speaker there. Mapoko, good morning. Good morning, Sight. Morning. Morning, Senator. Uh, my question is a simple one. I've um, heard in previous conversations that Triple C uses MDC um, property or offices. And I wanted to understand that has MDC done anything to remove them from the property or to stop the dependency that they have on your resources? Well, I'm sorry to say, um, and I, I, I did not think that uh, I would say this, uh, but I have to say it. I'm sorry to say that the triple C doesn't seem to be concerned at all with law and order. Um, it doesn't seem to be concerned with the people with the with the rights of other people. They are occupying illegally our Bulawayo office, uh, Gweru, Kwekwe, uh, Chinoi, uh, and they occasionally bulldoze in our offices in Bindura. These were offices acquired by the MDC and belong to the MDC. Um, we are doing something about it. We are reclaiming our offices back. Uh, and we will do it um, in the fullness of time. Uh, uh, we are going to take our offices back. We have already started the process. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I'm not at liberty to disclose exactly what we've done, but it is at an advanced stage, and we are very sure-footed about it. Well, thank you for responding to that one, uh, Senator Monzora. Uh, now let's hear from Bosalani. Uh, Bosalani, please uh, do go ahead. Uh, and guys, let's be brief so that we get to take more questions. Uh, thank you so much. Good to see you, Senator uh, Monzora. I just wanted to ask quickly, um, when it comes to politicians, there's this word which is always used, that politicians are there to serve and not, um, and not to be served. But uh, when it comes to the, 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 the issue of the amount, the strategies that are implemented by politicians, to what extent do you feel the citizenry uh, should have a voice uh, in whether uh, certain strategies are either effective or not effective? And uh, also, is it, is it okay to use politics of hatred uh, towards one political party uh, if uh, one is attempting to become the next uh, government in waiting? Thank you so much, Senator. Well, of course, um, it is the modern political practice is democracy. And democracy takes uh, uh, various forms. There is internal democracy. So the first important thing uh, when you are going to elections is the in, in, uh, democratic candidate selection. Uh, some parties use uh, representative democracy uh, in the sense that they use the structures to do the candidate selection. This is what the MDC does. Other political parties use a broader citizenry to do candidate selection. In other words, uh, their primary elections are like mini general elections. Uh, both are, 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 are good, but where there is no internal democracy, there is no participation of the citizenry. And when you are getting into a serious political decision, if you want to make a serious political decision, you have to consult, you have to consult the representative of the people. In the case of the MDC, we consult what we call the National Council. The National Council is made up of 211 people who are from all the provinces in the country. 
The assumption, of course, is that they are representative of the sentiments within those provinces. We normally give them a notice of about two weeks to, uh, uh, to one week to two weeks before they come to the National Council. We tell them the issue at the end uh, before they come, giving them enough time to consult uh, with their uh, constituents. And when they come, we then make the decision. For example, I was faced with the decision of whether we, I should retain, remain in the presidential race or not. I convened a meeting of the National Council. They made a collective decision that we must pull out. Um, for you, for the citizens to be involved, there must be democracy. There must be an avenue for them uh, to be involved. Of course, the citizens can be involved where there is ambiguity as to who uh, they should approach. Um, then the politics of hate. Nothing will uh, come out of hate, you know, uh, and it's a very unjurable um, uh, uh, weapon because it soon wears out uh it may create sympathy on the headed on the part of the headed and i can see sometimes that uh, there are some zimbabweans now who are beginning to think that there is something right about what i am doing because of the amount of vitriol so sometimes when you hate someone so much and a lot of hate it puts doubt in the minds of the listeners Morgan Changrai was brought to prominence, not by the MDC, not by what he said, but what, but by what Mugabe did to him. Day in, day out, he was being called names, T-boy, Chamatama, what, 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 what. And the people of Zimbabwe began to say, hold a minute, maybe there's something right about this guy. So I can see that there are people who are now saying, hold a minute, I think uh, Monzora has a point. And I'm happy to say that uh, most of the things that I have warned the Zimbabweans about have come to pass, you know. I told Zimbabweans that this election, in, in, participating in this election was an act of foolish bravery. And the foolishness became so apparent, it's now so apparent, and so on. So um, hate does not uh, help, and I hope that one day within the opposition, we are going to talk to each other in a civil manner. I have seen politics in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in South Africa even, where they do not, uh, they, they, they engage in rational disputation. They don't in, engage themselves in politics of hate. Well, thanks so much, Nessa, for that response, guys, this morning. Guys, please do request the mic one to hear from your thoughts uh, this morning and only questions that we have uh, from Senator Glass Monsora this morning. But, Senator, you know, December 9 are going for the by-elections uh, as MTC pulled out from the elections, from the elections. Also, the issue of delimitation, citing that issue now, still unresolved that issue there. Is MTC going to go to the by-elections? That question came out in the National Standing Committee last week. And I did defer that question uh, to uh, a meeting that we are going to have either this week or to, uh, next week uh, uh, of the National Council or the National Executive to decide uh, on whether we should participate or not. There are two schools of thought. One is that we should concentrate on uh, our party building uh, in preparation of 2028 um, and uh, uh, redress all the structural weaknesses within our movement. The other one, of course, is that um, uh, we should always uh, contest for political office. Uh, we should always um, uh, be adaptable to the situation. So those schools of thoughts are going to be uh, uh, debated in the National Council. So I'm not able to say it whether we're participating or not, but we are going to uh, decide that as a collective and not as myself, myself as the leader. Well, thank you for responding to that, uh, Senator Monzora. Uh, let's hear from George. Uh, George, good morning. What's your question to Senator Monzora? George, are you there? Yes, 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 yes. Um, yes. Good morning. Um, good morning, Senator. I just want to um, to hear your advice as we this recording um, uh, are happening. As us citizens, on our constitution, do we have 
any constitutional right to challenge this because we are the ones who are disadvantaged. Thank you. You can go right to Well, I, I, I am not so sure. George, whether as citizens you are at them, in other words, you are of the same mind regarding what is going on. Because I have seen some of the citizens in Bulawayo aligning with Chabang. Uh, I have seen, of course, some 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 citizens, sorry, uh, in Caldry Park descending uh, with what Chabang did. So I don't think citizens are in a homogeneous entity. But let's say that you are not happy with what is going on. Yes, you have a, you have a remedy. One of the remedies is for you uh, to force your leaders to talk it over, uh, to go to your leaders uh, to say, we want you to talk. That's number one. Number two, it is to join the court action, uh, to, be, uh, to apply for what is called joinder. And argue your case for or against uh, whatever um, is there at stake in the court. Okay, thanks so much for that response. Let's go to another speaker there. I see uh, Carlos. Good morning, Carlos. Morning, morning, man. I'm back. Uh, you know, I'm still struggling with that question. I'm kind of like lost. But anyway, these are politicians. <laughs> you know, politicians are politicians. You ask them, they ask, they answer something. I'm still struggling, Senator Monzo. You, in the response of the Quero Congress and the Triple C, a statement said Triple C was not there in Quero. That for me is exactly my confusion. You, 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 you continue to say you are giving an advice that the Chabang must talk over this thing with the, uh, 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 the leadership of Triple C. This is where I'm having a bit of a challenge. W what exactly is that discussion? Because if, if Chabang says, speaks of the, the Guero Congress, the, the Triple C was not there. So if, if he's talking about what is happening now, it is not only him. In fact, he is a spokesperson. Um, who's this guy in the, the, the tall man who is, who is, who is known as an MTC, Senator Kalipani Pugen, right? He's an MTC, he's spokesperson to Senge. Well, I, I'm not saying speak about why he's here, but all I'm saying is it is not by default that everyone who has a Tukweru being an MTC or MTC alliance, everyone, everyone was a must as if it was an MTC's program to move to Triple C. Then how and what exactly will be the discussions here? What, what is this? I'm, I'm confused. The link that is trying to link the, the, the triple C and the MTC then. I'm failing. Can you maybe try again to link me to understand? Maybe come to a layman. Don't use that big jargon, please. I'm a publican. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Carlos. What I am saying is that the Triple C was not there at the Guero Congress. So Guero Congress can be a starting point of anything. The Guero Congress actually was not an MDC Alliance Congress. It was, an, it was supposed to be an MDC Congress. That is why at that Congress, Guerosh Menube and his party, the MDC Green, rejoined. Um, and that's why PDP rejoined the MDC, uh, so the MDC Congress. But as you probably know, the judgment nullified the Guero Congress. So the Guero Congress is a non-event. It did not happen in the minds uh, of the uh, of the of the of of the of the law. But we know that certainly in 2022 a party called Triple C was formed. And most of the officials who had been elected at the Guero Congress joined, went, joined or formed uh, um, the Triple C. And these include Chabang. How they allocated themselves the seats, sorry, uh, uh, positions, uh, or how they then deprived each other of positions, we don't know. But what is important is that Chabang was in league with the colleagues that he is fighting with now. He was in agreement with Advocate Chamisa. He was in agreement with Tendai BT, Welshman Nube, Fadzai Maere, Promise Mpwananzi ETC. 
they have fallen out over this recall thing. And your question to me was, what, what, what is your advice? And my advice is that, uh, guys, you are comrades. Whatever was uniting you, uh, it makes sense that you should talk it over. Now, what is the substance of the discussion? Uh, Chabangu makes a demand um, uh, that, uh, according to you, Kelos, uh, looks unreasonable. Maybe it is context, context, and I don't know which context he is using uh, himself. But uh, there is no substitute to dialogue is my simple uh, 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 understanding. As regards the substance of the dialogue, then that's something else. Uh, obviously, when you have members in parliament who have been recalled and you want them reinstated, somebody will have the power to reinstate them. It makes sense to speak to the person who can reinstate them. And in this case, the only person who can reinstate them is Chaba. Well, thanks so much for that contribution, Senator. But I see uh, Chenge, your hand is up. Uh, Chenge is the information director of information publicity under MTC. Chenge, what do you want to say? Uh, what I want to say is that the Senator has to take leave. Uh, there are some important engagements. Uh, we slotted it for up to half past nine, and I think it's time up. I'm sorry. I know you. Look, we have uh, Salani here, finals. And also, I see my sister is here. They can always arrange another space for um, uh, the outstanding questions. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Chenge, for that contribution. But also, Senator, what are your closing remarks to wrap up the space this morning? What's happening in politics right now? Are you happy with the state of politics in Zimbabwe right now? Recalls after recalls, are you happy with the state of Zimbabwe where it is right now? The state of politics in Zimbabwe is not good. Uh, the politicians are there in order to make life better for the citizenry. Um, so what we notice is that the two political parties that are in parliament, uh, the MDC, the, the, sorry, the, the, the ZANU-PF and the Triple C, uh, have been for the past uh, month or two, uh, been engrossed in unending bickering, one bickering over legitimacy, and now we have this issue of recall and so on. And yet there are a lot of things happening in Zimbabwe. There is mass unemployment. There is endemic and, and, and uh, debilitating poverty that our, pe our people are going through. Our mineral wealth is being plundered in broad daylight without the local people uh, are benefiting. There is a lot of social injustice that is happening. I am aware of people who are about to be displaced in Matebeland North. Um, I think it is in Binga. And the plight of those people is not being examined. Uh, they are supposed to be relocated, I think, to Lupane or something like that. Um, and, and again, the justice of that, uh, whether their rights are being protected or not, has been lost because everybody is interested in whether Chabangu has got the right to recall or what, and so on. So the people of Zimbabwe are not being serviced. There is an outbreak of cholera right now before the real serious onset of the rainy season, a waterborne disease has, become, has, has manifested itself. And this calls for the attention of all the elected officials. There needs to be safe delivery in the towns. Um, in the town that I'm living, which is Arare, the, the transport situation is horrible. There is no fixed fare uh, for the, by the transporters. It depends, first of all, whether it is rush hour or not, or whether it is raining or not. When it is raining, the fee, especially for people, who, the fare for people who go to Chitungwiza, it jumps from $1 to $2, which means the person needs to have $4 for transport uh, every time. This is uh, uh, a great difficulty to our people. And the politics must address that. The politics must be there to redress the suffering of our people. We have people in the diaspora who are contributing to the national fiscus uh, through uh, repatriations back home. They are dis, 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 uh, charging a responsibility, but they do not have rights. That's why we are calling diaspora vote. Our politics must be issue based. Our politics must shun hate, ranga, acrimony. It must be 
it must appeal to rationality, what I call rational disputation. So we need to change our politics. I agree with Welsh, Welshman Mube for once that the politics that is there dominating the opposition is kindergarten politics uh, and it is politics that is not sustainable. A politics where people lie to the electorate that there is going to be a rerun by Sadak, that there is going to be a challenge of this election, that uh, the people are not going to are going to boycott parliament when in fact they are not and so on and so forth. We should move away from that and go to the politics that is that it deal with the bread and the butter issues for our people. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Senator Monzora, for coming through to the show and answering our questions. It's quite interesting, a space that we have here this morning, guys. I Unfortunately, we can't ask questions anymore because of the guest is about to leave. Finals, I see you have the mic. Davazes, I see you have the mic. Vega, I see you have the mic and wanted to ask questions. But unfortunately, our guest has got to leave the building. Anyway, let's go to Finals. Finals, what are your comments around that, around this interview this morning? Uh, okay, uh, Senator is left anyway. Um, the question for me, probably Chingete can uh, answer, respond to this question. Uh, the Senator spoke very candidly about uh, the synergy that is creating with um, the um, UK Labour Party. The issue for me is, does it not give ZANU-PF the excuse to call the MDC a puppet party? Chingete, I suppose you can answer and respond to that. Thanks. Chengeta, you can go ahead and respond uh, to Finos. Uh, th thank you, Finos, for uh, for that question. Uh, one thing that I think we must look at is the fact that uh, it has always been a ZANU-PF thing to accuse others of being puppets. And sadly, uh, you see these things coming out even in the opposition. They accuse each other of being puppets and, and, and this and that. I, I don't think that uh, it would be appropriate for anyone, uh, not just ZANU-PF, to want to ascribe that to any political party or anyone. Because if you go back to the liberation struggle, uh, when we were fighting for our independence, uh, we had so many international synergies outside the country. There was it, it, Internally, there was ZAPU uh, and, and ZANU. Externally, we had China, we had Russia, we had all these countries outside Zimbabwe that were supporting us. And I don't think there is anything wrong uh, with, with that. Uh, and also given the fact that we have since grown to be a social democratic party, and there are sister social democratic parties outside Zimbabwe, and it is only logical and reasonable that we have, and uh, or rather we forge relationships with them so that there is things that we can also learn uh, uh, from, 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 um, um, from them. And even more importantly, the three broad uh, movements that formed the MDC, there was the labor movement, the constitutional movement, and the student movement. We are the product of the uh, labor movement, and we link with all parties linked to uh, uh, labor and social democracy. And I think that should not be a problem with anyone. And we are not going to pay attention to those law laws if anyone ever calls us uh, puppets. I, I, I think it's a lame excuse and we should grow our politics and be more mature. Well, thanks so much, thank you for that. Uh, thanks so much, guys, for joining us this morning. I see Ndaba Zezo, your hand is up. Ndaba Zezo, please be brief so that I can wrap up the show this morning. What's your take, Ndaba Zezo? Ndaba, are you there? All right, we seem not to be getting down with it. Anyway, as that brings us to the wrap of the show this morning. Yeah, uh, maybe, Beggy, since you are also a speaker, you, you can maybe uh, ask a question or just comment. Okay, nyabonga, nyabonga. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask, I had the senator talking about um, our politics and how, um, you know, toxic and all that kind of thing. I wanted to ask Usenet, unfortunately, is, is left, uh, about how how he thinks the solution can be found among the opposition leaders. Because I mean, I, where I stand, I think he is also part to blame for the current si situation we are witnessing today. Because, um, you know, every time an opposition leader has been given kind of authority in, in, in the opposition, he runs, he runs the project on his own and and they don't find a way of, of bringing each other uh, together. We saw when the senator was given the, the judgment, Supreme Court, and and it seems uh, the, the, our leaders are happy to run the show alone. And there was no effort. I never saw anything where 
someone was trying to bridge the game and bring the leaders together. And I wanted to ask you, Senator Kuti, what are his efforts right now that he is trying to do to bring all these different opportunities together to fight one 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 system? Because right now, as you see, MDCT is still fighting to say they want their office and all these things. It's always fights, fights. Why can't... I, I mean, what's the strategy of bringing these guys together and they have one formidable opposition? That was my question. Well, thanks so much, guys, for joining us this morning. Quite interesting space. Our guest this morning was Senator Tagas Munzora, the leader of MTCT. The quite interesting and uh, quite uh, riveting discussion that we have had this morning. Tune in tomorrow morning. We're going to be hosting the Triple C spokesperson, right? It's going to be our guest tomorrow. Uh, tune in uh, to unpack that. And if you have questions, guys, right for tomorrow, please come early and then have your questions. Thank you. I see your mic is unmuted. Want to respond? Yes, yes, yes. I just wanted to say quickly, I am not going to dilute what uh, uh, my president said, but he already spoke to the issue of unity uh, amongst uh, the opposition political parties. But I, I don't think it is up to Senator Monzora or the MDC, but it is up to all of us as Zimbabweans to forge that unity, particularly in the opposition. We need that. And what we have done as the MDC, we have reached out to Zapu. We've reached out to DUZ, all the political parties that you know, save for all the opposition political parties that you know, save for the Triple C, for the reasons which the, uh, uh, my president has already mentioned. And I'm not going to dilute that because uh, we, we stand by those facts. And it does not mean that we would never want to forge any alliance with the Triple C. In fact, uh, if anything, uh, there's wisdom that goes, uh, um, there's a very thin line between a four and a friend. And I think that. For as long as the masses, for as long as the people of Zimbabwe call for that kind of unity, it will not be possible for Nelson Chamisa or for Douglas Monzora or for whoever, particularly in the opposition, to refuse that unity. So let us approach it collectively, and I think that we can achieve better. Thank you, um, and uh, we'll try and address that um, uh, questions on the next platform uh, on your invitation. Thank you, Brian. Thanks so much for your time, Say Thanks so much to the guests that came through this morning. Thanks so much, guys, for your time. Uh, please do follow us site on Twitter, to follow our AI presenter, Alice, there on Twitter as well, and to like our Facebook page. And also do uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for myself, Brighton. We've been loving our to you this morning. Yeah, and for myself, Nantan Shamabiwa, see you on other shows. Mm -hmm.